Native American culture, what is it? Depends on who you ask. If you ask my elders, they'll pour their heart out to tell stories of their forefathers, of schools they hated, and of community gardens. If you ask my parents, they'll talk about idiotic facades, masked in gatekeeping and drowned in alcohol. 53% of Native American children live with a single parent. I ask, how am I supposed to be proud if only one parent looks at me as their kin? If you ask my friends, what is Native American culture, they won't give you a derivative answer. If you ask me, six months ago, I would say something like, spiritual fables I barely know, but I'll act like I know just so no one can question my faith. If you ask the truth from our elders, if you ask the truth from our reservations, they won't admit it out of pride, strength, and fear, because we were a proud people. Two years ago, my uncle was burned alive by a man you could virtually call his cousin. Our elders will always preach to love ourselves, but how am I supposed to love myself if my people don't even love each other? At his funeral, my great-grandpa told me, when I was a boy, I was forced into a school until I became a man, a man defined by the people who killed and raped his grandparents. But he continued, with a tear in his eyes, I stayed strong because back then we had to be. Who else would have taken care of my parents? Nowadays, it's backwards. I got my kids asking for rides or to walk them home because they got too drunk. The events that led to where we are today should have never happened. He was right. He wasn't talking about the funeral. He was talking about as a people. I don't know how everyone else got there, but this is my story. When I was a kid, I saw the world like every other child sees it. It's in my palms. I can be an astronaut. I can be an actor. I can be on TED Talks. Well, probably not the last one. I wasn't as big of a nerd as I am now. It wasn't until preschool I started to realize where I fit in this world, in this nation, inside and outside of my own reservation. It's not normal for my parents to fight this much. It's not normal for my mom's breath of reeking of alcohol. My cousins have the same issues. In elementary school, they always ask, who are your role models? Who do you strive to be? Who are your superheroes? Thor, Captain America, blonde hair, blue eyes, they look just like you. My superhero will never be in a comic book. He has brown hair and brown eyes. He's the soul and spirit of the Ogallala Lakota warrior that once was. In middle school, the alienation got worse. In football, they called me Tarzan. That's almost as cultured as Redskins when I think about it. I guess that helped me realize how people viewed me, how people viewed my culture. That's when I decided to cut my hair for the first time, because I was afraid. In high school, things got worse. Stories trickled in often. Your uncle's an alcoholic. Your cousin had a kid in high school. Your other cousin had to get her stomach pumped. Some people even had the audacity to tell me, I hope you don't end up like your mom. You don't know her. I know all you see her as is an alcoholic. I still love her. I know we all struggled to get here. And yes, despite my appearance, I am 100% sober. Uh, <laughs> but the point of that is I stay sober because I seen my family lose themselves. But most importantly, I stay sober because I know it will numb the pain that I feel like it has for my family before me. But at what cost? Love, future, life itself. I saw my mom for the first year, first time in years at my uncle's funeral. She was drunk. The irony of it all was that's how we got here. I guess we're all addicted to something. What will numb your pain? I guess I was lucky. I got into music. I got into writing. But that's not the point. The point is it happens in our backyards, and you will never have to deal with it. But maybe you'd walk with a chip on your shoulder, too, if you can live in my shoes when you're told you're not expected to make it past 50. And if someone in a generation before me has already done this, I wouldn't need to be here. So my generation, all I ask is for helping hands, for culture, for a place of belonging. And I want to say this for all marginalized people, all First Nations, we are not defined by oppression. We are not defined by the obstacles that we had to, de had to avoid. All centuries of everything that held us back will never define us. We are not victims. We are heroes. We are creators. We are builders. We're the artists, the writers, and singers in tomorrow. 
We are the superheroes for tomorrow's comic books. We're the blood, sweat, and tears that make Native Americans proud. But most importantly, I have to thank all who's still fighting, who has fight for that pride. I know who have lost their lives, who are still struggling till this day, and to those who will struggle tomorrow. And your fight will never be in vain. Rest in peace, Jason Harley Bedellian. Thank you.